Glasgow born lad who has 99 bonus points for his club to date. It's going to be tough for these guys under this on this surface. PC, you know the track. What about it? Yeah, I raced here many, many times. One of my favourites. The problem we've got at the moment is very, very wet, but it's going to be quick and fast out there. Starling Marshall goes away out front and takes away on the inside. Robbie Kessler picks it up for the first bend. Track there by Cole Stonehill. Could Stoney be beaten in this competition for the first time this season? It's Kessler in red for the home team, Sheffield. Cole Stonehill in second place. Back in third in the blue helmet, comes with the mud flying. Is Scott Smith tailed off at the back? Is Barry Campbell? But Stoney set for defeat here, PC. Yeah, Stoney's having a good go here around the outside, but Kessler, if you notice, he's riding very, very tight. He's making it very, very difficult for Carl Stonehill by throwing all that dirt over Carl. You can see Carl ducking and diving there, trying to stay out of that dirt, but uh, certainly Kessler knows his way around this circuit. Robbie Kessler rides for Landshut in Germany, certainly used to riding under these conditions down there because it seems to always rain at Landshut, but Robbie Kessler, Germany's number one rider, riding here for Sheffield with a lap to go, is some 15 metres in front of Carl Stonehill, which means that Stoney will be set for his first defeat by an opponent this season. Down the back straight goes Robbie Kessler in red. There are two races developing here, a contest at the back as well, but Robbie Kessler takes the checkered flag ahead of Carl Stonehill. Third place is going to go to the rider in blue, but only just for Scott Smith. Four points to two, Sheffield take the heat. Robbie Kessler there, a good birthday present for him. 28 years old today, Robbie Kessler. His time not a fast one, way outside the track record, but the skill was there. The Sheffield fans have enjoyed that. The handshake from Carl Stonehill. How is it out there? It's just puddles everywhere, you know. I, I lifted too much at the start, and by the time I come out of the first corner, I couldn't see anything. And then I was uh, gaining on Robbie, and I thought, he knew he was riding such a good inside line, but I was still getting his spray. So I thought, well, I'm getting covered in the muck anyway, I'll give the outside a go. And uh, he just plastered me, didn't he? It was stupid of me. So what well, do you think the visibility is going to be a real problem tonight? Yeah, but it's break the track was breaking up as well, so it's there's some uh, ruts there already, even after one race. And it's slippy, and then you hit a rut, and it just shoots you. And there's puddles all over the back straight. And... Uh, but every time you come out of the corner, just to spray from now, uh, uh, Robbie's wheel just fill me in. He's clean though, have you seen it? Well, that's what you've got to do, you see. You've got to get out the front and stay there. It's when you get behind, you get covered like you do. Yeah, better make a better start then, Anna, instead of prying about. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. I'll let you get back on. Okay. Inside is Rusty Harrison, the 19 year old from Adelaide. The Australian under 21 champion goes to Workington in white. Lee Hodgson for Sheffield goes in gate two, yet another teenager. For Workington gate three is Jamie Mann, just 17. On the outside is Andrew Moore. More on him later, because he lost a bike last week. But the structure we have over the starting gate is novel here. There are the lights above, a lovely structure, away they go. And in red, it's Lee Hodgson, but he goes wide. And coming through on the inside, Rusty Harrison, the Australian. Coming back is Lee Hodgson, and down goes Mann at the back there. And real trouble for James Mann, the 17-year-old, a former British schoolboy grass track champion, is hugging the mud down there, and I think he's got problems. Yeah, that's what you call man overboard there, Tony. He's down on the track. He seems to be his, seems to be okay, but he did catch a rear wheel going into the turn. He's probably just winded there. The St Johns are with him, and uh, he's going to need a bit of time, I think, before he gets his breath back. But he is kneeling up there. But the way he caught that back wheel there was uh, the cause of the accident. We go from the start. Now that's man there in the yellow. He misses the start altogether. He's at the back. Now he cuts across to the inside. Now he gets a bit of speed here at this point and he runs into the rear wheel of his own teammate and that was a good manoeuvre there from Andy Moore on the outside in the blue helmet just to miss him because uh, if An Andy had run over him there that could have been really serious. But uh, again we can see it from the start, James Mann not a good start there at the back but uh, he's coming round this turn. Now we heard Carl talking about a few ruts that developed possibly there. Just at that point, it seemed as though James Mann in the yellow picked up some extra grip and caught the back wheel of his teammate and down he went. Well, Rusty Harrison there seemed to slow right up, Peter, in the white. Uh, well, that was a problem, but we can see those ruts that uh, Carl was talking about. But Ved programme going here and all these youngsters coming through, it's great for the future of the sport. There are the green lights and up goes the tape. Referee David Dowling sends them away. The man in red is Lee Hodgson. On the inside, Rusty Harrison hugs, hugs it. Away round the outside goes Andrew Moore. This time they're going to be a little bit more careful down that back straight. And Lee Hodgson, if he keeps it like this, will be the second successive heat winner. The 16-year-old crosses the tapes after one lap in second place. Rusty Harrison, the 19-year-old Australian. 
and struggling at the back is Andrew Moore, an 18-year-old, but this is clean riding, PC. Yeah, it is. Dusty Harrison's still having to go, though, you know, even though that visibility is pretty bad, but Lee Hudson's having a great ride here, staying out in front. He's doing everything right at the moment. Lee Hodson in front for Sheffield in the red helmet colours ahead of Rusty Harrison, who's now going to put him under pressure with a lap and a half to go. Andrew Moore's at the back, the 18-year-old from Lincoln, but in the lead, Lee Hodson in the red helmet colours, just 16, and showing a real talent for the future because conditions far from easy. And he's now stretching the lead against Rusty Harrison, who goes wide there, and Andrew Moore is coming through, and a lovely ride sees Andrew Moore take himself into second place. The Sheffield fans are absolutely delighted with that. But Lee Hodson wins it, Andrew Moore in second place in blue. In the end, Rusty Harrison, the Aussie from Adelaide, is eclipsed in that one. And that's a 5-1 victory for the home side Sheffield, which will extend their lead on top of the 4-2 in the first heat. Nine points to three, Sheffield now lead with two heats gone and 13 to go. And what a ride by the 16-year-old Lee Hodson, Peter. See there, he joined his teammate now on that 5-1 and uh, Rusty Harrison there had to settle for that third place. For Workington, on the inside, uh, we see in blue Adam Allen, the 18-year-old son of Guy Allen, well known in days gone by. Mick Powell, the Aussie, goes for Workington in white in gate two. Uh, in gate three, it's Simon Stead, the 18-year-old, six in the World Under-21 Championship last year. And on the outside, it's Lee Smethills, the 19-year-old. That's the lineup. Out at the start. This is heat number three, a six-point margin in favour of Sheffield at the moment. Away they go for the gate there. In white, it's Mick Powell to the first bed, first gate. Wide in red there is Simon Stead, and trying to pick it up, but doing so, putting Powell under pressure. A real battle going right around the outside, the 18-year-old. No fears for the teenagers at Sheffield here tonight, because a great ride by Simon Stead around the outside, and now Mick Powell has plenty of work to do. Yeah, lovely ride from Simon Stead there. These Sheffield lads, they also have a conference team here, which is like a third division, which is a training league, and all these young lads are coming up through that. And the way he went past uh, Mick Powell was unbelievable there. It just shows you when you know this home track like these lads do, they ride on it so much, they're just pulling away from the opposition. Simon Stead is stretching that lead to become the third successive heat victory. Victor, of course, for the home team, Sheffield, in second place. Mick Powell, the 31-year-old from Brisbane, is training him. A big gap now back to the man in third place, which is Adam Allen, the 18-year-old. And this will be another heat advantage for the home side if it stays like this. Four points to two will be the margin. Lee Smethills is tail off at the back, but now is trying to come round that top bend. But a heat victory for that man, Simon Stead in red, ahead of Mick Powell in white, third place in blue. There goes to Adam Allert. It's another four points to two. Heat advantage for the home team, Sheffield, who are now lead by 13 points to five with him. Yes, it did. Watch Mick Powell in the white. What a great start, Mick does. He's right in the thick of things there, but on that first turn, he's right in that inside line. But just look at the rider coming round the outside. Simon Stead, he knows there's just a little bit of grip out there. He's just stayed ahead of that spray that's coming from Mick Powell's back wheel and just had enough speed to nip past and stay clean, and he is clean when he takes that flag. Well, a third successive heat victory, but an outstanding winner of heat two. TV link. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, um, obviously, the tracks knows it's best, and uh, it's a bit tricky, but I just managed to keep on the bike, and uh, it was all right. You managed to keep your face clean as well, which is a bit of a first, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, at least now I'm in the bar quick, having my glass of Coke. Uh, well, there's a little bit of time before you can do that. I'll let you get back and sort your bike and We'll see you later. Way out the outside and still got the lead. Yeah, I made a pretty like reasonable start and um, was with Mick and um, could, I, could, I wasn't fine enough in front to go across him. See it here. So, uh, you know, just stuck to the outside and there was a nice little um, berm to sit in and uh, took me around nicely. You, you seem to almost show content though for the conditions. Not a problem? No. I've, I've done a lot of riding since I've been back from Australia and uh, most of the meetings have been wet, so I've got a bit of practice in. Well, Simon, you've got a little bit of grass track background. It looks like that helped you just went yeah, straight for that dirt um, and hang. Definitely, just, um, just use what little experience I've got, you know, but every, every bit helps and uh, just trying to put it down on the track tonight. Can I say, we had a talk earlier, sorry, Jonathan, we had a talk earlier about it. 
Yeah, no, man, you're really aggressive out there, and it looks really good. Yeah, cheers. My compliment from a former world champion. We'll let you get back to the pit. And that will be Sean Wilson going from gate three for Sheffield. Remember, it's the Sheffield rider in red that has won each of the first three heats so far. Andrew Borit is the 18-year-old, goes for Sheffield in blue on the inside. It's James Mann, the unfortunate faller from heat two, goes for Workington in yellow. Gate three, Sean Wilson in red on the outside. In white, it's Peter Carlson up by the tapes, and away they go. Sean Wilson in red. Home pole position there, struggling on the inside in blue now is Andrew Moore, going round the outside and tracking Sean Wilson was Peter Carlson. Moore is now putting him under pressure. Sean Wilson out front, knows this track like the back of his hand, and Sean Wilson, we know, suffered an injury last week, but he's back here riding. He says he's almost fully fit, and he's certainly looking at here as he stretches that lead with every turn of his wheel down the back straight. Yeah, I think Sean's fine by the looks of things. I know he's black and blue all over after that crash, which we saw earlier, but uh, the way he's just pulling away, and certainly he was trying to help his uh, teammate Andy Moore there on that first lap, but he knows this track like the back of his hand. He knows the quick way round and uh, he doesn't seem to me as though he's really having to uh, pull all the stops out here he's just doing enough just over a lap to go for Sean Wilson to take his first lot of three points and continue with this fantastic average being unbeaten by an opponent. In second place, the 24-year-old Swede, Peter Carlson. Back in third place, 18-year-old Andrew Moore. Right at the rear, the unlucky James Mann. But here is Sean Wilson to become the fourth successive heat winner for Sheffield. Ahead of him, second place, Peter Carlson. Third in blue is Andrew Moore. Yet another heat victory by four points to two for Sheffield, who now lead by 17 points to seven and looks set for victory here. Sean Wilson's there. Had the way, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, a good one, though. Uh, out there, ten points ahead now. You must be over the moon. Yeah, I am. I mean, like, they'll start making some changeable work in it and, you know, and uh, try pulling us back a little bit early on. And uh, Ian Thomas is a very good man with the programme, you see. And uh, I'm sure he's got a few things up his sleeve. But, I mean, our reserves, you saw in that at race two. I mean, that's where most of the meetings are won these days, you know, having good reserves and solid like we've got. And, uh, you, know, you know, to see him come and do that pass in the last corner, I mean... It's yeah. extraordinary for a reserve, isn't it? Do you think that's the key here? I mean, I think it's the key in any team to have like very good, strong reserves, you know, good pairings, you know, because I, I've seen a lot of good teams in the top five in, and and then the reserves aren't, you know, aren't really up to the rest because they've built that strong, and then the team doesn't do that much. You know, it nearly gets there. I've been in teams where I've nearly won leagues, you know, but I think we're doing very well. You know, the team's been structured very well, and uh, when when you see them go out and win, you've got to win, haven't you? You've got no excuse, have you? You know, I can't tell the guys I've come second, so. Well, listen, we're excited about Heat 11 because, of course, you're going to be meeting uh, Mr. Stone here. That's How fine. are you I'm about 13. that? I'm <laughs> 13. No, I mean, I'm 13. But if the reserves carry on, they'll be both in Heat 15, so I'll be all right. Just, uh, just tell us really quickly about the reserves coming through here because it's a training ground, isn't it? It's a real good place for them to breed them, if you like. Yeah, I mean, we've got like a lovely track behind uh, this, you know, just behind this back straight there. And every Saturday afternoon from 12 till 5, every, every Saturday, you know, like for like a year, they're down there practicing until it gets dark. The parents are down with their kids and the parents will come here on a Thursday night and then the kids want to go so they can go and hire bikes and it's chock around there on a Saturday afternoon, you know, I go down in winter, you know, to see what's going on. It's great to see the infuser them down there, it's great. Good, well, it's great to talk to you, thanks a lot, see you Thank later. You. The inside in yellow is uh, Barry Campbell for Workington, the man in red, Simon Stead, an architect of a fabulous heat victory early on for Sheffield in white for Workington, Carl Stonio on the outside. There is Adam Allen, away they go, bucking and rearing, and in white, Carl Stonio picks it up. Will perfect is Carl Stonio now, but down the back straight in a red goes Simon Stead. Can Simon Stead do it again as he did in his first outing? Tail off at the rear in blue is Adam Allen, but look at the effort. Stonio salutes the ground as he goes by. He will not now look back, PC. Yeah, I think Carl was just pulling his uh, visor down there, Tony, but uh, it did look good, didn't it? But on the back there, you see Carl's just holding uh, Simon Stead behind him. They're both riding very, very tight still. They're clearing all that dirt from the inside of the circuit, making it easier to ride low down, and uh, that's that's going to mean that the match is going to go ahead and just carry on because they seem to be coping quite well now. Carl Stonio looking set to be worth the first heat victor for Workington here tonight because with a lap to go, he's in command, but Simon Stead, so impressive first time out, is now looking about his challenge. He goes round the outside, he picks up the grip, the home fans are cheering, the battle is joined, Stonio is holding him off, the Grand Prix man, just a wheel in front, round the outside goes Simon Stead, but Carl Stonio holds him off, but over only just in second place, Simon Stead in red. Third in yellow and black is Barry Campbell to get his first point of the night. But that's the best race we've seen so far this season. And Simon Stead showed rare talent 
rare courage and enthusiasm to try and go round the outside of the Grand Prix man. But Carl Stonehewer. Last lap here on the outside, Simon Stead got lots of grip just on the outside. I'm not sure if Carl knows he's there. He's almost got round him on the bottom bend. This is the last bend here, coming right towards the pit gate. It looks as though Simon's going to get round him there. Lifts just a little bit there, but so, so close at the, at the finish. What a fabulous race here, but we see that every week here at Sheffield. What a ride by a star man. He... We're losing, so uh, we needed a win. Her conditions are so difficult, though, you know. It's so wet, and one minute you're gripping, next you're spinning, and... He's snaking on you even down the straight when you got your wheels in line. But I could hear Simon behind me then. I knew he was behind me all the way. And I just heard him. I think he was coming out of the top corner there. And I had a little look and I saw him. So I raced him into this corner. I opened it up a little bit more. Uh, stayed on the inside a little bit because the outside is... there. Yeah, the outside's too consistent. Oh, inconsistent. Uh, a bit gnarly, a bit wild. Uh, and I was lucky to hold on for the rim win, really. Sam was saying that everybody's getting a little bit cautious out there, and that, that's obviously the right thing to do, yeah? Yeah, well, the inside's like ice, and you sweat, and, and there's puddles on the street, and when you, 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 you lick a bit of dirt and it'll start pulling you, then you'll lick a puddle, and you'll start snaking, and then it'll pull you again, and it's just so inconsistent, you know? It's hard work on the arms as well. The best thing you could have done was just ride your line and hope for the best, that's exactly that's what you it. did. Yeah, yeah, I, I, heard, I knew he was there, I could hear him all the way. I had a little look and I knew he was there. I just saw his front wheel. Sure. I just give it a bit more gas. Well, Kai, you got your work cut out tonight. We'll let you get back to the home team, for whom on the inside in blue goes Scott Smith. Gate two for Workington, that's the sweet feet of Carlson. Gate three, the winner of heat number one, Robin Kessler for Sheffield. On the outside for Workington, Rusty Harrison involved a little bit, of course, in that incident involving James Mann in heat. See some passing later on. Our Stanley Marshall is going to move away. That's a new chance worth the way he does it. Red Robbie Kessler picks it up. The 28-year-old German again to celebrate his birthday today. In second place in blue there, Scott Smith, but coming through on the inside in white is Peter Carlson to pick it up. A brilliant ride by him to lead the worried Rusty Harrison at the back, but no problems for Robbie Kessler. I've said before, the weather is often like this where he rides down in Lancashire, and he's away down that back straight ahead of Peter Carlson, and they're really struggling in the back. This will be a two-man race, but for me, probably just Robbie Kessler making it one man, please. Yeah, we can see there's like uh, two kind of tracks developing now. Around the inside, it's getting a little bit polished. All that slime is just being thrown to the outside. Now, that outside is very, very grippy. I think a bit later on in the match, we're going to get riders trying that outside and getting some real slingshots around the outside. But it really is a good racetrack, this one. But Kessler's leading this one from the start there on that jowl machine, and he's heading for that three points. And I'm looking forward to the battles under these conditions between Sean Wilson and Carl Stonehill. But Robbie Kessler now set for his second heat victory in the night. The fifth heat win in six heat for the home team, Sheffield. He takes the chequered flag there, ahead of him, white Peter Carl and third place in blue goes to Scott Smith. And that means that another four points to two in favour of the home team, Sheffield, who now lead by 23 points to 13, with six heats gone and nine heats to go. And that man, Robbie Kessler, recording his second successive heat victory of the night. I, well, I think everybody in the Speedway knows that he's been national papers and everywhere. It's something that's never going to happen to me again. It's, I just could not believe it. What happened? Did you fall asleep? You drive and take to the wrong place or something? Well, you know, if I travel far, it's always to just relax in the back of the van. I read a paper and listen to a CD and I wake up and uh, I think we should be nearly there. I look, the next road sign working in 10 miles and I went, what the hell have you done? <laughs> oh, well, well, listen, we're glad you're here tonight. This is on behalf of all the ladies out there. Thank Happy you. birthday. Thank you. <laughs> and listen, now let's just have a quick chat about that heat. Two, two, max, two, three points, two wins. So it's going really well. Yeah, like, um, I'm really determined this season. I had such a bad time the last two seasons. And uh, this season I started up good support by Pete Osborne. He just came at the right time and gave me a confidence boost. And stuff is just going right for me this, this season. Ten points ahead at the moment. Can you hold it? Yeah, I think we can. Well, our, our, especially our reserves are doing such a great job and uh, should be all right. We never know with, uh, what they're going to do with tactical substitutes or golden doubles. You never know. what. They, I, They've got a chance to catch up, but I think we've got it in our pocket. All right, Robbie, we'll wait to see. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. Let's go over to... Gate three in yellow and black is Lee Spevils, and on the outside, 
we have uh, in blue uh, Lee Hodgson, such an impressive win over that reserve seat, but away they go, down the back straight now, Sean Wilson has cracked it again, and he will become the sixth heat winner of the night for Sheffield, if it stays like this, but they're not packing them in behind, he's going well ahead of Big Powell, but Sean Wilson will perfect on this circuit, Peter. Yes, he is, I think he's riding... Uh... When, when you're a bit sort of injured and feeling fragile, you tend to make better starts, and the way he made that start was unbelievable. He's just riding on the edge of that grip there. He's got his back wheel just on it, his front wheel's on the polished part, and he's just pulling away from the opposition. And uh, mind you, he can ride anywhere around this track, week in, week out. He's been around here for such a long time, and he's a master around this circuit. No wonder Sheffield haven't been beaten here for an awful long while because Sean Wilson here has this as he pleases, barring a mechanical breakdown here. The man in second place, back in wide, the very experienced Big Powell. Back in third is Lee Smithills. Disappointment for Lee Hodgson after his earlier success. But with half a lap to go, Sean Wilson is going to become yet another heat winner for Sheffield. Yet another man in the red helmet colour to take the chequered flag. Sean Wilson takes it as the flag is waved now ahead of Big Powell in white. In third place in yellow and black is Lee Smithers, Smithills and I can tell you it's the first time the points have been shared tonight. It's three points apiece in that one to make it 26 points to 16. Sheffield lead working tonight. This championship here also last season so uh, he's a real expert around here and he's on fire around Sheffield. There's the lineup then. Carl Stonehill goes from the inside in yellow for Workington. Lee Hodgson, the promising 16 year old for Sheffield, goes from gate two. Peter Carlson, the 24 year old Swede, goes from gate three in white. On the outside is Scott Smith, the 27 year old. David Dowling, the referee tonight, a refrigeration engineer for Bradford. Away goes the starting marshal. Up fly the tapes and Stonehill fires as well. Carlson goes with him. A double tactical substitution with a vengeance. Pulled by Ian Thomas, but Scott Smith's going to put the pressure onto the back. Stonehill has stretches it out front, Stonehill and Carlson together to make a 5-1, the first heat advantage of any consequence here is for me for the visitors, the tactical substitution is working PC, I wonder if he should have gone for the golden tactical. Well Ian Thomas is such a shrewd man when it comes to team manager in and uh, really the way things are working here it's just right, they're going to pull back uh, four points on Sheffield and bring them within six points. Carl Stonehill out front, Carl Stonehill are going well there in yellow and black and riding exactly as we know he can ahead of his teammate and partner Peter Carlson back in third place there in yellow and black and struggling in red sorry struggling is Scott Smith and struggling even more is the teenager Lee Hodgson just over a quarter of a lap is the margin now in front for Carl Stonehill out front and this will close the gap to just six points and give Workington at least some hope the check and flag taken by the man in yellow Carl Stonehill ahead of Peter Carlson in white Third in red is Scott Smith. Five points to one, working to take the heat. It's now Sheffield 27, Workington 21. And a great ride there by Carl Stonehewer. He and his teammate congratulate each other. Riding conditions certainly very tough here at this Ollerton Circle. Carlson in white goes from the inside for Workington. Gate two for Sheffield is Adam Allen. Gate three for Workington is Rusty Harrison, who's been a shade disappointing tonight. And Simon Stead, who goes from the outside, has taken five points from his two rides so far. And of course, that of that country making a perfect town look here, and away they go. And now, on to the old Rusty Harrison takes a wobble there. The man in white, Rusty Peter Carlson. But look, coming round to the outside in blue is Adam Allen. The Sheffield fans are cheering because it's a great ride by Peter Carlson to hold him off. But of course, with Simon said in third place, it'll be a share of the points. And the disappointment is Rusty Harrison wobbling on the back. Yeah, I must say the Swede Peter Carlson is beginning to really settle down on this circuit, although he did get in a bit of difficulty. He's got a puncture. His back tyre has gone down, and that's allowed the two Sheffield boys to go by him. That tyre just about jumped off the rim there, Tony. Well, Peter Connick spotted that as the Sheffield riders went through. Real disappointment for Peter Carlson. Real disappointment for Workington. Absolutely nothing he could do about that. And down the back straight they go with a lap and a quarter to go, set for a 5-1. And all the efforts of Workington's team management in the previous heat with the tactical substitution proving to no effect because that's totally nullified by this now as they go down the back straight with Simon Stead and Adam Allen in control. Rusty Harrison at the back. It'll be a 5-1 this to Sheffield to restore that lead again and a restore a 10-point lead because the rider in red, Simon Stead, takes that ahead of Adam Allen in blue. A token point for Rusty Harrison in third place in yellow and black. A 5-point to 1 margin 
for the home side there, pulling back the balance of the 5-1 reverse the previous time. We see the problems there as Peter Carlson's bike. Back in the pits earlier, in between heats, what actually happened out there? I know I get puncture on the tyre, so I put a little bit uh, air out to this one in the tyre, so, but it was maybe too much. Oh, that's what happened, was it? Yeah. Okay. Must be really disappointing though, because you just pulled those points back and now you're back to square one again. Yeah, I had a, and I made a good start then. Yeah, so it's a bit sad, yeah. Okay, well, I can tell you got it. Let you go back and sort that puncture out. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. See, he's leading the race there. Look at that bike snaking all over the show. Holds his hand up in the air to let the other riders know that he has got a problem. And there's that tyre just about spinning like crazy on that rim. There we can see coming out of the corner, that back tyre is all out of shape. And the Sheffield boys did really well to nip by. A good bit of uh, evasive action there. Hand in the air from Peter Carlson and uh... as they're putting on a great show for us. The lineup: Lee Smithfield for working to the yellow from gate one. Scott Smith goes for Sheffield gate two. Gate three, the experienced Mick Powell, the Aussie from Brisbane for Workington. On the outside, Robbie Kessler, a great record for him for two heat victories so far for the rider from Germany, whose birthday it is today. He's in the heat. We move on now to heat number 10. Away they go as the Starling Marshall walks away. And away on the inside in yellow goes Lee Smethills. Left at the tapes in blue is Scott Smith, the man who was having problems with his bike. But round the outside goes Robbie Kessler. And what a great ride again by the German, who's having a tremendous night here for Sheffield to pick up the action here in the red helmet colours with a lap to go. Robbie Kessler in second place in yellow. Lee Spevils for Workington, third place for Workington. His big power, problems at the back for Scott Smith, but Robbie Kessler is having a brilliant night, Peter. Yeah, Robbie's just dynamite from that start. Look at his lead there, he's a good 50 metres in front. Scott Smith actually had to borrow one of his teammates' bikes to go out there. His own bike wasn't ready, but he's having a go there because he's in last place, Scott Smith, but he's still trying on that borrowed machine, and possibly he might try an outside run and try and gain on the two Workington boys. All the action over the back, Robbie Kessler way out front, but Lee Smethill's just holding on to second place, almost the length of the straight between them now, as they're into the final lap. Anything can happen at the back, Kessler is winning this out front. Now coming through in yellow is Lee Smethills in second place, third big foul in white, problems at the back, there's a lot of pointing going on, but Robbie Kessler takes the chequered flag in red, in second place Lee Smethills in yellow, third is Vic Powell in white, that's a split of the points at three all, which means it's now Sheffield 35, Workington 25, but Robbie Kessler, his 13th victory of the night, 10 point marcher to Sheffield, the big man Sean Wilson goes to the inside in red, gate two, Barry Campbell for Workington yellow, gate three, Andrew Moore, the reserve replacement in blue on the outside, Carl Stone here, which one's going to win this, Peter? Sean? Well, blimey, the way Stone, Stone has got a better record, I think, but, uh, it's going to be so tough, who's going to be brave in getting that dirt? A battle of the giants, it's Wilson gets the first draw, he stretches it out, Stonehewer goes round the outside from the back, Stonehewer puts up the challenge, it's Wilson and Stonehewer, this could be a two-man battle, this could be a match race, because the guys at the back, Andrew Moore and Barry Campbell, aren't in this class, Sean Wilson out front, Wilson gained the drop there, with a lap and a half gone, but Stonehewer is now putting him under pressure, Wilson through the water, Stonehewer in the dry, what there is of it, the battle is joined. Yeah, the there's so much dirt on the outside and just no one just brave enough to get in it. I think Stoney's now settled for second place, but Sean Wilson out front, very, very determined. He's having a great ride out there in front, but round the outside, we're, we're all action at the moment there, but Carl Stoney is second place, Sean Wilson just pulling away. Well, there's a battle going on on the back too. It might be a different class out front, but well, we know what's going to happen there, but they're really battling at the back and at the moment it's Andrew Moore in front of Barry Campbell and those points will count at the back as well we can see those guys but the chequered flag is out the man who's going to take it is Sean Wilson in red Carl Stone here in white beaten for the second time of course by an opponent this season third place going to the man in blue who's Andrew Moore four points to two the winning margin for the home team chef who do now lead by 39 points to 27 problem with the lighting here in the stadium Half the track is now in darkness, and knowing the way these lights work, it's going to take a while for them to light up again. And, uh, well, I, I haven't seen Speedway bikes with headlamps on. I just... Andrew does. He's got his back wheel right in it, and that's the manoeuvre I'm kind of talking about there. There's dirt out there. Andrew loves the outside, and he's just got enough speed to get in that dirt, and very, very brave to be out there. There, that bike straightens up, 
and pulls him over that line as he grabs that third spot. Fantastic riding there from Andrew Moore. And over the line, Sean Wilson, that what a style there. British, British Bulldog, Sean Wilson, three points for Sheffield. I don't know, I just went over the checker flag, looked back to like see Stoney or whatever, and all the lights went down. I thought, <laughs> he thought hang yeah. on a minute, something's gone wrong. I said, yeah, the, the grid's gone up. I mean, we had that happen at Odsal a lot of years ago, you know, the national, the grid went down in Bradford and the whole speedway was wiped out. If people didn't see the top of the show, we, we didn't mention it then, but you literally been riding with one arm, you had a huge crash uh, last week, didn't you? Yeah, it was yeah, it was one of my better ones, you know what I mean? <laughs> Got all my sponsors in as I went over, so... Yeah, it was, it was... That was important. Yeah, it was quite a big crash, but luckily, right, nothing was damaged, like, bone-wise, so it was just muscular. So I had a good week at a physio in Home Perth, and they've really done a lot of work on me, and uh, probably better now than I've ever been, tough really. Boys, you yeah. Yeah, you, tough, you speedway riders, tough boys, aren't you? Anyway, Sean, on that race, come on, what was going through your head at the start line? Were you thinking about, well, uh, i got to make this happy? Yeah, I was. Four, uh, yeah, I, knew, I knew Stoney was on fire, and I could see it was a lot sloppier for Stoney than it was to me. So, you know, like, I'll give him, I'll give him, I had the better start, really, because my position was in a lot, you know, I was in a lot better predicament than he was. But uh, I thought he'd be on me. The thing is with Carl, he's very good around the inside line. He's also very good on dirt, but he's more so on the line, and, like, he's he's got very close to me and passed me before on the line, even at Sheffield and stuff, you know, and I think nobody can do that, but he can do it so... That was like the race I rode as tight as I could to the curb and I was trying to get dirt out and accidentally just dip my foot in a puddle every now and again to drown him. Yeah, earlier when they did their double tactic, uh, Carl, did, I think he insisted on the inside gate saying there was a spot there that nobody touched that's and you it, were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. You know, I just knew it, there was no point in going, you know, like left or right up the start. It was just go straight and get in the corner. Carl had all the, to get through all the slop of what's been left, you know, by the race. Well, first blood to you, but you might have to meet him again in I'll heat 13. And in fact, Carl... Um, I saw you gesturing down the straight, or were you wiping your visor clean all the time? No, I was wiping my visor clean. I ran out of tear-offs halfway through the race. I was trying the big run on Sean up the outside up there. I just kept getting plastered, and then he caught every puddle as well. And all the spray from the puddle kept getting me. I just ran out of tear-offs, and in the end, the last lap, I just had to ease off a bit just to give me a bit of room, because I couldn't see a thing. Have you got the wind-on tear-offs or the rip-offs? Yeah, the wind-on. I must have used half a roll there, or a full roll, whatever it was in there. Um, you went off gate four then, I guess you prefer gate one. Well, yeah, I, well, hopefully I won't have four in eat 15, but he was just, he just slime all the way, you know, I dropped my clutch and I was, I was all over the show, I was just skidding all over. Where was the point where you settled, if you did settle for second place? Probably, uh, the second lap it was, I think. I don't know if it was coming into this corner or coming out of it. I was, I couldn't see a thing, I'd pull my tear off and he wouldn't go no more. And it was a waste of time trying to go round him because I couldn't see anyway. I was just following the curb, <laughs> just hoping I didn't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some great lines, hasn't he? Well, go on, we'll let, we'll let you uh, carry on, but I'm just going to wonder, don't get cleaned up. In red, gate two is Rusty Harrison for Workington in yellow. Gate three, Andrew Moore in blue and Mick Powell in white on the outside, the experienced Australian from Brisbane. But somehow, at the beginning of May, here we go now for heat number 12. The riders look out of the tape, up they fly. In yellow, Rusty Harrison gets to the front, but once again, Simon Stead it is that picks it up on the inside in white. Mick Powell gets into the action, going around the outside now in yellow and black, and picking it up is Rusty Harrison. The challenge mounted, Simon Stead is out front. Simon Stead held it tight on the inside line and gained the advantage. Yeah, the rain's come on a lot heavier now. That inside line, which was... Quite, quite nice to ride on, has become very, very slippery, so we've got such a difference now from the inside to all that dirt that's piled up on the outside. Simon Stead in front of the red helmet colours, keeping this sequence of heat victories for the home team. Sheffield going ahead of its second place, Mick Powell for Workington. His Workington teammate in yellow and fellow Aussie, Rusty Harrison, the Australian under-21 champion, back in third place. Failed off at the back is Andrew Moore, the 16-year-old lad who's studying for mechanical engineering away at the North Lincolnshire College. With a lap to go in the red helmet colours, Simon Stead is going to take the honours in this one with his third heat victory of the night, if he can hold on to this one. Simon Stead in red, ahead of Mickey Powell, who's raising steam from his rear wheel as he goes through those puddles. And Mick Powell will move into second place in white. Third place in yellow goes to Rusty Harrison to earn a share of the points for Workington. It's now 42-30, a 12-point margin. 
for Sheffield with 12 heats gone, still three to go. But Simon Stead gaining his third heat victory of the night is proving pretty impressive. And in the dry jump, Stone Hewer in white for Workington. Gate two, Robbie Kessler so impressive tonight for Sheffield. Gate three, Peter Carlson, the Swede, on the outside, Sean Wilson. Sean Wilson, three heat victories. Robbie Kessler, two heat victories, five between them. Carl Stone Hewer so far, of course, with two heat victories, the only heat winner for Workington. That's the lineup now. Trouble coming up to tape for Sean Wilson. Mud indeed, and it's sticking to just about everything. I'm glad that we're in the warm of the commentary box, Peter Collins, and a journey home. Well, that'll be wet, I expect. Yeah, full mark to these riders, Tony. The, the conditions are atrocious, and they've gone out and they've raced their hearts out. Full marks to them. What an effort. What an effort by all of them, a great effort by everybody on and off the track to put this meeting on, but in red, Robin Kessler picks it up, the German who's having a tremendous night, Carl Stone, who in white, goes in pursuit, in yellow and black, Peter Carlson, Sean Wilson are basically right at the back, and this they haven't seen here for a long while, but Robin Kessler in red. Robbie Kessler looking superb, it's Kessler v Stonehewer, back in third place, Peter Carlson, oh, he goes wide, Stonehewer, Kessler picks it up, Wilson tailed off at the back, that is amazing. Yeah, we said that, Tony, you've got to be brave to get in that dirt, Stoney tried it, we saw what happened to him there, you've got to stay light, stay down tight, but Stoney really gave it everything, he tried to do that race in that big glass round the outside, too much for him and he almost paid the price there. Stonehill back in second place, Kessler the immaculate out front. Now Sean Wilson putting pressure on, Sean Wilson's gone down! Sean Wilson has taken a tumble, he's grabbing that arm, I hope he's OK. The referee is stopping that, they are on the final lap, I'm sure that he will award that. And that will make it a three-all with Kessler the winner. But sadness for that man, Sean Wilson, and I hope he hasn't further damaged his arm. The referee has excluded Carl Sutton, he has excluded the rider in blue, Sean Wilson, as the prime cause of the stoppage. He has awarded it red, white, yellow, which means it's a three-all share of the points, which means that Sheffield lead by 45 points to 33. Robbie Kessler it is that gets his third heat victory of the night ahead of Peter Carlson and Scott Sarles Stone here, and Susie Perry is in the action again. Well, I'm glad to say I've just had a wink through the, uh, through the helmet there. So, uh, Sean, arm, is it okay? Yeah, I'm just sick of falling off, you know. <laughs> well, it, um, apart from that, I mean, it's been an uh, amazing night. It looks like you've really got it in the bag now. Yeah, you know, it's looking good, and uh, we've just got to keep plowing at it. And, uh, yeah, we'll do it now, you know. We've got a bag full of points to take to work it. And... Can you just talk us through what happened out there? Yeah, I was just, you know, I could see how deep it was on the outside, and I was letting everybody get spread out because I made a terrible start for. And I thought, right, it's time to go now, you know, and I had the thing, but dirt was so deep in me, yeah. just dirt hit the chains, brought the chains off and the bike just stopped, you know. And nothing you could do because you were really pushing it to the limit. Yeah, it's just when the chains come off, the bike just, you know, the bike just stops dead and it just like threw me over the handlebars, so. Yeah. Now Stoney was ahead of you, he was really pushing it, pushed it a little bit wide. Yeah, when well, I saw him go out there, that's why I didn't try and pass Peter down there because I saw it down to Stoney. And like, you've got to kind of wait up when the track's in so, you know, so deep like this. So I thought, well, maybe not as deep at this side of the car, you know, this side of the track, but it was, so. Are we going to see you both in heat 15? Well, I don't know. Maybe not for the points now. Maybe what? Sorry. Maybe I won't have enough, many, enough points now, you see. That's the thing, because the other guys are flying, aren't they? Oh, they are. Yeah, they are, I'm absolutely. I'm only on nine, so hey. Shall I let you go and do some addition? OK, cheers. Right, Thank go, you. Go, go do some adding up. I, let's get you again for once. Just lost it down that back straight. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing. You know, I was stupid, really. Because it's so deep on the outside, and I was just giving it what for on the outside, like, and it locked up and took off and locked back up again. I thought it was going on my backside, but I stayed on. Only just. Okay, well, we're going to go to see the next heat, so uh, thanks very much. Bad uh, luck with that one. Only <laughs> one more and then we're off home. <laughs> <laughs> Bless, him. Bless him. Let's go see the next heat. Here's Tony and Peter. Good. Lee Hodgson, the 16-year-old on the inside for Sheffield. Gate two, the veteran Mick Powell in as a tactical substitute for Workington. Gate three for Sheffield is Adam Allen. On the outside is James Mann. A shade unfortunate so far not to get a point and taking a tumble in that very first race. Our starting marshal moves away. Up they fly. The tape didn't seem to go up properly there. But the man in front is Allen coming through on the inside. A teammate battling with him is Lee Hodgson. But now trying to come through. Through the mud they try. 
And the man in white there is Vic Powell. He's used to all sorts of conditions. He's having another go in second place. Vic Powell, team riding by Lee Hodgson. Out front is Adam Allen. Everything's happening here. Yeah, unbelievable. Mick Powell here is having a real go again round that inside, straight through that water again. But out in front there, Adam Allen, he's going real well. I used to ride here with his dad, Nicky, and uh, also his granddad. But uh, we've lost the rider at the back also. He's on the track there. James Mann, it is his retired for the second time tonight, but he's got his bike off the track on the same bend as he came off before. But no doubt about Adam Allen. Adam Allen going to produce his first heat victory of the night, surely with a lap to go. Out front in red for Sheffield, the fans are cheering. In second place, Mick Powell. In third place is Lee Hodson. Disappointment for Workington because yet another heat victory here will extend their margin to 14 points. Sheffield, and that will help when they go for the return at Workington. But a great victory for Adam Allen in red. In second place, Mick Powell of Workington in white. Third in blue is Lee Hodgson of Sheffield. Four points to two. The home team, Sheffield, win that one. They now lead by 49 points to 35. A 14-point lead. I really, considering the conditions, we can see that he just makes the start there in the red, but right in the thick of things, Mick Powell is tucked in there in third place. Lee Hodgson's got that second, but well, just watch this through the water there. Mick Powell absolutely drowns his teammate James Mann. James Mann, I don't think, recovered from that, but Mick Powell did all the work there. He did marvellously to get that second place. We see the first turn again. In front is Adam Allert, but cutting back here in the white helmet is Mick Powell. Watch when he hits this water there. What a splash there. His mate behind him, James Mann, just wiped out, but Mick Powell kept going. That engine of his just carried on going. He managed to get the second place and got the 4-2 there. Sheffield 4, working to 2. Well, Adam Allen, the heat winner, he's just 18 years old, and Susie wants to... Yeah, well, uh, in my first two rides, my bike fell a bit slow, so I changed to my second bike and uh, felt good in the race after. That one, I just thought, I've got to go out and win it, get some points for the team, you know, so I just did it. Was it your idea to change onto your second bike, or was that a bit of advice on someone else? No, it was mine, because um, we do all our own engines at my place, so, and I could just tell that it felt slow. I just wanted a bit faster speed for these conditions, so I changed. Are these the worst conditions that you've actually ridden in? Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, we don't usually run when it's this wet, but you know, we've got to put on a good show for the telly, so. Well, you've certainly done that. Well done. Get back, go back to the pits, and uh, congratulations on that win. It was really great. All right, Adam. Six in the world of the 21 final. Surely a star of the future. The 18-year-old goes from gate two. Gate three, Carl Stonehewer, number 12 in the world now in the Grand Prix this year. And Robbie Kessler, the 28-year-old German, celebrating his birthday today with an immaculate record of four wins from four rides tonight. He goes from the inside. He's actually going from gate two, rather. Big problem. Here we are, heat 15. Unbelievable. Our starting marshals played his part, New Charlesworth. He marches away. Referee David Dowling lets up the tape. And away they go. Line of breast coming across in yellow. Carl Stonehill and the man in white is Peter Carlson. And down they go at the back. The stoplights are on as the front two march on. I just hope nobody is hurt here. But uh, they certainly struggled there. And it's teammates down. The Sheffield pairing of Robbie Kessler and Simon Stead on the deck. All four riders have been put back in by our referee. He deems it first men bunching. And under these conditions, really, I think probably our referee, David Dowling, the refrigeration here from engineer. Start here. The rider in white, Carlson, makes a great start from the inside, but comes across into his teammate. But well, there's a problem here for the rider in blue, who runs into that deep, heavy stuff there, Simon Stead, and comes across into the path of Robbie Kessler. Now, Robbie's fallen down there quite heavily, but hung onto the bike. He doesn't look as though he's injured, uh, but when the bikes come to a rest there, he's still struggling to get up on his feet. On the outside, again, we can see the mess that uh, Simon Stead's in comes across there, catches Robbie Kessler. Robbie hadn't missed a start up until this point. Robbie suddenly realises there's something wrong and uh, he's now lying on the track. And uh, I hope he's not got anything that's serious for his birthday because you can see it again. The rider in white actually comes across and into his teammate, Carl Stonio, but they sort themselves out early. But there was the problem at the back. No problem with the Workington boys, but uh, could be a, a shoulder problem that we'll all remember. Conditions atrocious. The riders, heroes all, and away they go. Picking it up in red. Simon Stead coming through in white now there. Here's Peter Carlson round the outside. Goes Stead in red. A brilliant ride by Stead. Kessler's trying to go with him. He's got by Carlson. But this man, Simon...
Simon Stead has a great future. What a fabulous ride by him in the conditions. Yeah, a great manoeuvre on the first turn there. Robbie Kessler tried the blast round the outside. He's still trying it, but unfortunately, it's not worked for him at all. He's gone back to the back. But again, it looks like it's going to be a shared heat here. Simon Stead certainly flying the flag for Sheffield, riding very, very safe now. He's almost there. He can just keep this bike on the tyres. Simon Stead, impressive, extraordinary riding tonight with three heat wins before this one. Ahead of the man in white, Peter Carlson, the 24-year-old Swede. At the back of the moment, Robin Kessler, his first defeat of the night. But with a lap to go, the young Sheffield rider out front, just 18. He comes, of course, originally from Sheffield. The family steeped in speedway position. And doing the family proud is this man to take the chicken flag tonight. The finale for Sheffield, the fans love it. A great night ahead of him, second place, Peter Carlton. Third in yellow and black, Carl Stone Hewer. Three points apiece, the heat score. 52 to 38, the final score line. What a race, what a ride, what a rider. What about that, Sam and Jonathan? Good night, we'll see you next week. Good night. Remember 1990.